Hey, it's Steve. In this video, we are going to take a look at four upgrades you might want to consider for your Unistellar telescope. These are upgrade options that will work with both the original EV Scope, the Equinox, and the new EV Scope version 2. The upgrades include an easy to install and use dew shield, a light pollution filter and adapter, a solar filter, and a Telerad finder for your scope. First off, let's look at the dew shield. This one is from Farpoint Astro and is designed to be used on a Celestron C5 or a Mead 125 ETX, both SCT telescopes. However, it is also the perfect size to fit on the EV scope. The dew shield contains a felt lining on one side of the flexible plastic and attaches with a large Velcro strip. One side also has a strip of rubber to help it grip on your optical tube better. You simply wrap the dew shield around your optical tube and secure the Velcro bands together. You want it tight enough so it won't droop down into the light field blocking part of it, but also loose enough so you can slide it up and down the optical tube instead of removing it each time. This way you can slide it down to remove or install the cover or batten off mask and then slide it back up when you want to use it. So why do you actually want a dew shield? Well, if you use a telescope on humid evenings, dew can condense on the imaging camera lens located at the front of the telescope. That will degrade your images. But the main reason I use a dew shield is to help improve the contrast of the images since I often have a lot of outdoor lighting around my backyard. The inside of the EV scope optical tube is rather reflective, and so any bright light entering the telescope from an angle, such as that coming from a street light or your neighbor's porch light, can bounce down the optical tube, off the mirror, and eventually into the camera sensor, washing out your image. The felt lining on the dew shield will absorb a lot of light and help to limit the amount of light that can make it down your telescope optical tube that comes from any off-axis light source. This can also help reduce glare on your images if you have your telescope pointed near a bright planet or the moon. These are cheap and easy to install, and I recommend using one if you observe near streetlights or in humid environments. But if you have an observing site well protected from stray light, and you don't have a lot of issues with dew formation where you live, you can certainly skip this one. The next upgrade is a light pollution filter and adapter. Here I have a DGM Optics NPB filter or narrow passband filter and a couple of adapters. Light pollution filters come in many varieties and some work better than others on different objects. The DGM NPB or narrow passband filter and the Optolong L Pro filters are good general purpose filters that block many wavelengths of light typically associated with light pollution from artificial lights, but they still allow nearly all the light through from the primary bands associated with emission nebulas. So this filter will help to keep the sky background darker and increase the contrast between the deep sky object you are looking at and the surrounding sky. They don't provide much benefit though on galaxies which kind of emit across the entire spectrum of wavelengths and can actually make reflection nebula harder to see. But if you live in an area with a lot of light pollution, the vast majority of nebula will look better with the high quality narrow band filter than without one. The secondary tube on the EV scope does have threads, but they are C-mount threads instead of a standard one and a quarter inch thread. So to install the filter, you need to use a C-mount to 1.25 inch thread adapter. I originally picked up this adapter off Amazon, and while it works fine, the length and smooth nature of the adapter make it very challenging to install without dropping, making it pretty frustrating to use. However, I recently came across this extremely short adapter on eBay. It is short, easy to grip with your fingertips, and far easier to install. I normally just leave this adapter installed on the telescope at all times since I can reach past it to install and take off the filter. So if I want to change out the filter, I don't have to actually remove the entire adapter. To install the adapter, first make sure your telescope is pointed at or below horizontal. So if you do drop the adapter, it's not going to fall down and hit your mirror. Then thread on the filter if you want to install them both at the same time. And next, carefully reach into the telescope with your fingers, line it up with a secondary tube, and thread it on. Keep in mind that if you are facing the front of your telescope tube, you have to turn the filter to your left in order to thread it onto the secondary tube. The NPB and similar filters can be left on all the time and your telescope will continue to work normally. 
However, if you use a filter that allows less light through and only allows very specific wavelengths to pass, such as an oxygen-3 filter, then your telescope won't be able to align itself with a filter in place as not enough stars will be visible, at least in most areas of the sky. So if you use an extreme narrowband filter like that, you do need to align the telescope first and then install the filter. Anyway, these filters can really improve your images if you regularly observe from cities with extensive light pollution. If you have darker skies, you won't really need one. Here are some sample images I took with my EV scope using the DGM Optics NPV filter. Some of these were taken from Bortle 6 skies, but many were taken from my backyard, which is well into the Bortle 8 range, as I live in an urban area. Some of these were very long exposures, and all did have some exposure and color adjustments tweaked in Adobe Lightroom. Next up is a solar filter. As the sun ramps up now toward solar maximum, frequent sunspot activity is going to occur on the sun between now and 2021 through at least 2025 or so. With a solar filter on your telescope, you can observe these sunspots when they occur. While there is no risk of damaging your eyes when observing the sun with the EV scope, since there's no actual optical uh, eyepiece you're looking through, if you expose the end of your telescope directly to the sun, even for a short time, you will destroy your image sensor and potentially actually catch it on fire. The primary mirror in the telescope will focus all the sunlight directly onto the sensor, likely burning it. So a quality solar filter is critical for safe observing and do make sure when you're installing and taking off your filter, the telescope is not pointed towards the sun. Like with a dew shield, I'm using a solar filter designed to fit on a Celestron C5 or a Mead 125 ETX. This filter is from AstroZap and uses a very high quality Bader solar film. This film will produce a sharper image and better overall view than any glass solar filter in general, but through the EV scope you might not really be able to notice much of a difference since you're pretty much limited by the focal length and camera resolution anyway. Note that the Bader film is supposed to have that wavy look to it and should not be stretched tight. So if it looks very wrinkly when you get it, that is actually the way it is supposed to be. If you stretch it tight, it actually does degrade the image. The filter slips onto the top of your telescope and can be secured with the three plastic thumb screws. Again, make sure you are not exposing the telescope opening to direct sunlight when you install the filter. Since the EV scope software does not currently offer solar tracking, you must manually locate the sun with a software joystick and track it manually with the same controls. Now, finding the sun can actually be far harder than you might think unless you install a solar finder on your telescope, such as this one from Teleview. Uh, this particular one from Teleview can just be attached with some double-sided tape, and it will make it easier to find the sun. But the best way that you can get your telescope pointed without a finder is to generally set it up where it's roughly pointed in the direction of the sun and then look at the shadow of a telescope on the ground. Use the joystick controls to move the telescope until the shadow is as small as you can make it. The shadow will be at its smallest size when the telescope is pointed directly at the sun. Then, looking at the image on your phone screen, you can move the scope in the direction of any brightness on the screen, since the only source of light bright enough to make it through the solar filter will be the sun. Once aligned, you will see the disk of the sun, but note that most solar filters will alter the sun's color in some way. The Bader solar film will generally produce a natural, close-to-white look of the sun uh, in an optical telescope, but it did look a little bit pinkish here on the phone screen. Most glass solar filters will generally turn the sun more of an orange color. If you have the original EV scope or the Equinox, you won't be able to fit the full disk of the sun in the image, but with the larger field of view on the newer EV scope 2, you will be able to do that. Clouds kept moving in front of the sun this day, but I was still able to get some images of the sunspots. You can also view them through the telescope eyepiece, but they will probably still be easier to see on your phone screen or tablet screen since you can zoom in on them and see them a little bit larger in size that way. The views won't be as sharp as what you would see through a telescope with an actual optical eyepiece typically, but you can still see a lot of detail on the sunspots and it's a nice way to expand the use of your EV scope to the daytime as well. You can see here a couple of the sample images that were edited in Lightroom to turn the sun's color back to a natural whitish color. Uh, these were just single image graphs from the phone. You can produce better images though if you stack several dozen images together that were taken in quick succession using software like AutoStacker. I do have a video available that shows you how I process my planetary imaging using AutoStacker, and you can take a look at that as well if you'd like. 
A telescope with a solar filter is a great way to view a solar eclipse. And keep in mind, we do have two big solar eclipses coming up here in the U.S. There's a big annular eclipse in 2023 and then another big total solar eclipse in 2024. Okay, so the last upgrade I want to share with you today is a Telrad Finder. A telescope finder is certainly not at all needed to use the EV scope since it has an internal computer for finding and tracking objects, but there are still a couple of instances where you might actually want one. First, you might look up and see an object in the night sky but not know what it is, and so you don't know what object to actually enter into your Unistellar app to have your telescope point to it. In that case, you can just manually track the telescope to the object of interest in the sky using the finder on the telescope and the joystick in the Unistellar application. The second reason you might want a finder is to help you learn the night sky better. You can have your telescope go to an object, say M16, and then look through the finder to see exactly where in the night sky that object is located. In that way, you can learn to navigate around the night sky better on your own, which can be helpful if you decide to eventually pick up a small refractor or another telescope on a manual mount without any type of digital controls or setting circles to help you navigate. Now, you could, of course, just use a planetarium map on your phone or your tablet, and you should probably still do that anyway, but a finder can be a nice addition in some cases as well. There are a lot of finder scopes on the market, and the Telrad is a bit bulky, but doesn't weigh much, and is easier to see the night sky in than in some simple red dot finders. You simply attach the Telrad base to your telescope using some double-sided mounting tape, which is included, and then when you want to use a finder, simply put it in the mounting base and secure it with the thumb screws. Then you can use the adjustment screws on the back of the finder to align the finder reticles with what you actually see through the telescope eyepiece or on the screen. The Telrad will show a reticle circle with a 0.5 degree diameter, which is almost exactly the same as a true field of view seen through the EV scope, as well as circles at 2 and 5 degree diameters. Anyway, that is a look at four potential upgrades you might want to make for your Unistellar telescope. These aren't things you certainly need, but all can help add a little bit more functionality to your telescope in different ways. Again, these will work on either the first or second generation EV scope as well as the Equinox. But that's all for now, and thanks for watching. Bye.